What's up, everybody? It's Steven and Strudel in the morning, the Momentum Morning Habit Show here where we get you an unfair advantage on your day and lock you in to the habits that you wanted to set for yourself. So if you're here with us, comment below with the habit that you're working on. I'm doing my split squats as well as all the rest of the other habits I've been maintaining, including squats, pull-ups, dips, leg press, shoulder press, and archery. So those are all habits I've started using this habit Kaizen cycle, and they're all continuing with me. Goodness gracious, puppy, you're going crazy. So we're going to continue that journey, to finishing up on the split squats personally, and I'm going to be starting a protein tracking habit soon. So comment below with those habits that you're tracking. Ow, you bit my ear, you crazy pup. Okay, we're going to move over now to some news that we... It's good news. <laughs> that was a horrible. <laughs> what a horrible intro for this segment. Good news. This isn't good news at all. <laughs> Eating disorders thrive in anxious times and pose a lethal threat. <laughs> That's a funny intro. A recent survey found 62% of people in the U.S. with anorexia experienced a worsening of symptoms after the pandemic hit. And nearly a third of Americans with binge eating disorder, which is far more common, reported in increases in episodes. I'm going to put down the little strudel here. Put down the toaster strudel. Ah! She fell. Okay. So with that, what we want to pay attention to is, like, why is this happening? And typically... Um, you know, the culprit is stress because it's a very stressful time. Eating disorders can involve bulimia, anorexia, abnormal um, abstinence, uh, abnormal binging and purging, um, fear of certain nutrients like macros or like carbophobia is another one, um, certain specific foods and being afraid to have those because my whole world will fall apart. These are all phobias that are things that are happening. And as we see here... According to study here, eating disorders are thriving during the pandemic. Hotlines to the National Eating Disorders Associations are up 70 to 80% in recent months. So that is crazy. For many, eating is a form of control, which is what we all kind of are looking for right now in such a strange time. If you watched the debates last night, you understand. So for many, eating is a form of control, a coping mechanism tied to stress. Food scarcity and stockpiling behavior, which is like what we were doing when the toilet paper shortage just happened. Everybody was like, oh, I got I to gotta, like, grab everything. And then that triggers also scarcity mindset, which means you might start binging or you might start like hoarding or you might have a switch in your brain that says I need to protect who I am. So you might access old emotional traumas that you had that you forgot about. So um, these all these triggers can be triggered by anxiety, overeating, and you know we can go down routes we don't want to go down. So in this time, really I'm not an expert on um, eating disorders. I'm not a professionally trained person in eating disorders. I've definitely done a lot of research on them. Uh, personally, I think a lot of it has to do with reward systems, self-identity, and emotional control. So uh, I was reading through this article, and in part of it, they were saying that it, some of it's hard to find because this is known as a white girl disorder. I was like, whoa. And then later on, I realized that that was them making fun of the, you know, other people were making fun of it. But really, everybody is susceptible to this, and this is why. Uh, it's hard for the scientists to really track it down is because we haven't been able to pinpoint exactly who has all the disorders and how to get to it. Um, but it's a struggle for a lot of people. So if the struggle is real for you and you need somebody to talk to about it, I'm here for you. Again, I don't think I'm a therapeutic expert when it comes to eating disorders, but I sure would love to be an ear for you if you do have an issue and you want to come to somebody about it if you've been keeping it hidden uh, otherwise we suggest you hit up a hotline or something like that because it can make a big difference getting your eating disorders under wraps uh, sometimes just going to therapy alone can be helpful for that but also developing new systems for eating um, can help you see the light so you're like i don't want to be like that old self anymore I don't want to destroy myself. Mr. Baron Adams says he's at 201.4. His squats will be a 6, and his eating was an 8 out of 10. That's great. Mr. Baron, where's my magic mushy? Mr. Baron, nice work to you. Um, <laughs> kudos to you for getting that weight back out. We sure it was just water. And uh, nice job getting so many eating sessions in a row where you've had an 8 or up. I think we've only seen like a 7. Uh, you're doing so well. Moving over. The world famous habit roll call.
All righty, we made it. I landed. I landed softly at the check-in challenge today. Sammy is the starter here. This is my Sunday through Friday meal plan. I work, if I work out five to six days a week, cardio and weight lifting, and I eat clean all week. I reward myself with nigiri on Saturday. I don't know if I said that right. I do. That's um, um, sounds tasty though. I do tweak the meal plan a little. Though, I eat meal one. It is sushi, I'm aware, by the way. I eat meal one with full English muffin as my pre-workout meal. I eat meal one with full English muffin as my pre-workout meal. I don't eat the tortilla and rice either. I also swapped the chicken with more shrimp because I had an allergy test, and I'm actually intolerant to chicken. Oh, interesting, Sammy. Um, I'm curious about, you know, sometimes when we have tests for food intolerances, I'm curious what your ailments and symptoms were from it. Sometimes those tests can be a little bit janky. And they'll give you false positives a lot of the time. Or if you've been eating something a lot, then you're going to have like these extra amount of antibodies in your system. And so it'll look like you're allergic to that thing. But really, you just need a break. Uh, for me personally, if I eat eggs too many days in a row, uh, I'll start to get brain fog, maybe some skin irritations. And so that what would people say? I'm allergic to eggs. But it's, you know, that may be partially true, but I eat eggs at least three times a week. Like I eat them a lot. It's just that I have to take periodic breaks away. It's the same thing with dark chocolate. You gotta take periodic breaks away from things that cause those ailments. So it could be that your intolerance to chicken is actually you were just having too much of it. That being said, I really have no idea your circumstance. So I love that you did the research to actually go get the test and look into your body, Sammy. That's what makes you a champ. Um, a lot of people are not doing that. So uh, that being said, what else did I see here? With the English muffin, I eat meal one with a full English muffin as my pre-workout. I think that's smart if you're working out and it doesn't feel like it slows you down. Um, you know, for some people, I would say let's not have an English muffin for breakfast because it's like a starchy carbohydrate that could make you more lethargic and cause the reward response system to want more carbs later. But you, Sammy, I think because you're eating it before you work out, uh, females need a little more carbs anyway. If you feel good and you don't feel sluggish from the English muffin, keep up the English. This is Sammy's chart here. Uh, I don't have quite the right screen. Let me see if I can move it over here. All right. Okay. Hopefully you can read that. It's kind of small on my screen, I think, huh? Um, let me zoom it. Can I zoom that? All right. Hope you don't mind me sharing this, Sammy. So she has meal one, meal two, meal three, meal four, meal five. That means she's eating five times a day. Uh, that being, uh, let that be a lesson to those of us that just aren't getting enough food in. You need more food. Uh, Steffi Cohen, I went over her meal planning day, what Steffi Cohen eats in a day. She eats five, maybe six times a day sometimes, and she has over 20-plus world records. So she's a stellar woman, and so are you, Sammy, for getting this done and showing this to us. Uh, I think I will be going over your meal prep, prep program on my own Uh not out loud here and just to give you a little bit of extra feedback and i'm offering that as a free service here to people as well if you want meal plan reviews if you want me to review your meal plan for the week and show you little tweaks that maybe you can make to make that meal plan better i'm here for you if you want to send those over to me um, brandy i still have to do yours as well sammy day 16 36 banded shoulder retractions pec stretches three mile jog leg day and use the vibrating foam roller Bam, baby, we're in business. Oh, yeah. Evelyn Price, good morning. 28 days, no sugar. She made it a habit. I read hers out yesterday. Miss Evelyn, where are you at this morning? Usually you're here live with us. I hope you're well. Good morning to you. Maybe you just had to get into work early. Nichelle, I got two minutes to get through this. Nichelle, yesterday instead of eight-mile walk because it was just too cold, I didn't want my knees to lock up. I mean, so I did an hour of Zumba for Xbox today, and I did two hours of Just Dance. Oh, I love it, Nichelle. What a freaking good story that is. Let me give you a hip hop. Uh, I, since I love to dance, that's how I'll get my workouts in this winter. Beautiful, Nichelle. I'm falling in love with this idea. Uh, I had a good friend, John Kim, back in elementary school. John Kim bought Dance Dance Revolution, and he played it every day on expert mode, and he had six-pack abs by the end of the summer. So don't neglect the idea that dancing isn't good. It's wonderful for you. Better than walking, I say. Iggy Ignofo, day three. My deadlifts, clean three reps each. Did the majority of my meal prep yesterday, but I was out for chicken breast, so I turned down to the barbecue and threw some chicken on there while I went and did my lifts. I also used Calmful Sleep Magnesium Powder this morning before bed. As for my goals on the Peloton, I want to focus more on rides versus miles, although if I could hit 150 next month, I would be stoked. Currently have 56 total rides and would like to hit the 75 mark by Halloween and the century mark by Thanksgiving. Each ride is 20-40 minutes and ranges from hills, climbs, uh, high-intensity interval training, 
and active recovery. Stamina ability is changing, and it feels awesome. Beautiful. I love you, Iggy, for getting all that in. Uh, I think that's a wise choice, getting your mileage goal like that. That way you don't have to like always push to be super hard, but just pushing yourself to get on the bike. As we know, more frequent movement throughout the day is better for you, Iggy. Even sometimes maybe challenging yourself just to get on the bike for five minutes, once in the morning, once at night. That could even be really good for your hips, just to get more blood flowing through there. Guarantee you it'll make you live longer with the uh, fluid through your hips. Not live longer like longevity, but it'll make your hip life live longer. Late night post, but I was doing a lot today. Split squats, 17, woot de woot Doing well, Trainer Steve. I got my gym membership. I got my yoga instructor. The gigs keep coming. This will be my 7th or 8th gig of 2020, which feels pretty nice considering what's going on in the world. The food hasn't been dialed down yet. I think when my, fa when my family realizes I'm here to stay for a bit, they will stop having barbecues. <laughs> uh, I'm fixing to do another 72-hour sugar purge. That was a great challenge. Love it. Uh, I don't have enough time to respond fully to this one, Jonathan, but I really want to. Uh, fantastic message there. Thank you. Tracy, day 30, walked 30 minutes and did five sit-ups. I'm feeling great this week. I have a habit of overdoing it, but I have been listening to my body in 30 days is only 30 days in and only three to four days when my back was killing me because of the long drive. And that's the thing. Long driving will kill you. We do need to focus on getting out of the vehicle more often during those long drives. Mike Wasman, day 97, meditation, day 20, PT, killing it. Uh, Tracy says she didn't mind me sharing her chart. I shared her chart just like I shared Sammy's. I didn't ask for permission from either one. I'm a renegade. Sorry about that, guys. Um... What else have we got? Go-to snacks from Iggy, uh, because I believe Tracy was asking about some go-to snacks. I think I'll try to bring some more of those to the table. I'll write that down as a post to make go-to snacks. Uh, go-to snacks for Iggy are red and green peppers and hummus. I love that. Apple and nut butter, protein shakes. Uh, you're so right about all of those things, Iggy. Those are my go-tos as well. And I'll add some more in for a new post next time. Also, here's the post for the three meal prep tip mastery here on YouTube. I really, 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 really am trying to get YouTube going. It's impossible these days, but I mean, it's just where everybody finds content. So I want to get this valuable stuff out there. So if you could help me out by leaving a comment on the YouTubes or sharing the YouTubes with some homies, that would be very helpful. All right. I'm running late. Sorry, Mr. Baron. All right, I'm coming to you now. Everybody stick to it to get to it. I'm Trainer Steve. I'm out. You gotta stick to it to get to it.